Today we move into looking at 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Um, we're going to be looking at just the first five verses in our message today. As for other, other matters, brothers and sisters, pray for us that the message of the Lord may spread rapidly and be honoured just as it was with you. And pray that we may be able to be delivered from wicked and evil people. For not everyone has faith. But the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. We have confidence in the Lord that you are doing and will continue to do the things we command. May the Lord direct your hearts into God's love and Christ's perseverance. We've been looking a lot at all the themes around the second coming of Christ through Paul's letters to the Thessalonians. And today we think about the spreading of the word, how it's important that the message of the Lord can continue to spread. And that applies to us today, the importance of that message being shared, that the Lord will direct and guide us. Paul looked to encourage his readers He'd been encouraging them to stand firm in their faith, hold on to the teachings they'd received. And also reminding them that God is faithful and God will remain faithful to them. It's important that we pray for one another in our faith. We thought about standing firm last week and we should pray for each other to continue to stand firm, to continue to keep going in our faith. And so within this, we need to pray for God's message. Paul wanted the word of God to spread quickly. Is our world today expecting God's word? Are they expecting to receive it? Are they expecting to be transformed and challenged by it? The gospel of Jesus Christ should be spreading quickly across this world. And this only happens, of course, if we share the gospel message with everyone that we can. Jesus would tell the parable of the sower and we see that some, some seed fell on the road and was taken by the birds. Some seed fell by the side of the road and began to sprout up but it withered and died and some seed fell amongst the thorns and weeds and was choked out and some seed was deeply rooted and produced a great harvest. The seed being scattered represents the word of God. We need to pray that there will be a harvest. Paul also reminds us to honour the word of God. The word of God is never to be taken lightly. We also honour the word of God by obeying it and by sharing it with others. As we read and thought about it in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 in verses 16 and 17, may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave, grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. Chapter 3 begins with a prayer request that Paul makes to the church. Finally, brothers and sisters, pray for us. It's not a unique or unusual request. It's praying for the, the message of God to go out. Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles. The Thessalonians were brand new Christians. And yet Paul did not think they were too little to pray for him. Didn't think they were too immature in their faith to pray for him. He didn't think it was too, their prayers, it was too big a deal to ask for their prayers. And Paul humbly requested, brothers and sisters, pray for us. Paul wanted their ongoing prayers as a message would be shared and Paul would be sharing it you know, throughout, throughout the world. This message would be going out. It needed prayer. The request tells the Thessalonians that they needed to pray. Pray that the word of God would get out. And it's the same for us today. We need to pray for the word of God to get out. To get out there for people to receive it. This week we had a, a prayer, time of prayer at the church for the work of Open the Book. 
going into the schools, telling Bible stories to the children, acting them out, sharing the message. It doesn't matter how it was being shared, but they received that message. Pray for those opportunities to share that message, however it might be. Pray for people in their own individual lives. Pray for one another in the places where you might work or within your families, within your street, with your friendship groups. Pray for those people. Pray for one another. Pray that the message of God will get out. The word of God is essential. It's indispensable. All the church does is rooted in the word of God. Not popular opinion or the comforts of people. Pray that the word of the Lord may get in. It's one thing for people to hear it with their ears and to hear the words. But it's another thing to hear with their hearts and to be transformed. We read in Psalm 138 verses 1 and 2. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart before the gods. I will sing your praise. I will bow down towards your holy temple. I will praise your name for your unfailing love and your faithfulness. For you have so exalted your solemn decree, it surpasses your fame. Prayer for the word of God to get out and people to receive it. Pray for us that the message of the Lord may spread rapidly and be honoured just as it was with you. Paul continues to encourage them and also ask them to pray for God's message. We are also reminded that God is faithful. You know, sadly, at the end of verse two, we read, for not all have faith. And yet verse three begins with a wonderful assurance, but the Lord is faithful. God is faithful. We live in a world today where loyalty seems like a, a scarce commodity. We're often left to ask, who can we trust? Paul answers, the Lord is faithful. God's character never changes, his love never ceases, yet people let us down all the time. But God remains faithful, his compassion never ends, his promises never fail, his wisdom is always there. His purposes are never ones that don't work out. His strength will always be there. God remains faithful despite all the other chaos we might see in our world today God remains faithful he is faithful in salvation we read in 1 Corinthians uh, 1 verses 1 uh, what sorry 1 Corinthians 1 verse 9 God is faithful who has called you into fellowship with his son Jesus Christ our Lord and in 1 John 1 verse 9 if we confess our sins he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. In verses 3 and 4 of our passage today, Paul states that the Lord can be trusted to do what needs to be done in you and through you. But the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. And now in verse 3, he promises the saints the Lord will guard them from the source of evil. He will guard them and protect them from the evil one. God is faithful. The suggestion that when we work to hinder the progress of, of, of the enemy, there's a spiritual warfare that goes on. We read it in Ephesians 6 verse 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. The Lord stands to protect us from the evil one. We read in Jude 24 and 25. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault with great joy. To the only God our Saviour be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. God can be trusted to do what is needed through us. God is faithful. Do we ever get impatient and lose, lose confidence, think we lose confidence and worry about what's going to happen? Do we lose confidence in God and in what he's doing? Let us remember that God is faithful. 
Let us also pray for God's direction. Pray for pastors, ministers, church leaders. That we have the confidence that God will work through them. Pray that they will receive God's direction, God's guidance. Reminds us we need to preach the truth for all times. Follow the word of God. See what, what matches up to the word of God. Verse 5 puts the responsibility of following God's direction on us. May the Lord direct your hearts in God's love and Christ's perseverance. In verses 1 and 2, Paul makes a prayer request for the word of God. And in verses 3 and 4, he exhorts the saints to trust and obey with confidence in the faithfulness of God. And now in verse 5, Paul announces that we must trust in the direction of God. May the Lord direct our hearts into God's love and Christ's perseverance. Are we being directed in God's love? Do we pray for God's direction? We're all experiencing different things, we're all facing different things. Do we pray for God's ongoing love, for God to direct our steps, for God to lead and guide us? We need God's guidance, all of us do. But ultimately we can trust in him to have the perfect plans. May the Lord direct our hearts, the direct, open the path, clear away the obstacles. God is able to do those things. Do we pray for the Lord to direct us? How often do we stop at the start of a day and pray that God will direct us just in that day? We pray he will direct us in the coming weeks and months as individuals, as, as churches, whether you're from Liswery watching this or from another church. Do we pray that God will lead and direct us? God is able to lead us in the ways we should go. God is able to move obstacles and opposition out of our way. We read in Proverbs 3 verses 5 and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. It reminds us of the importance to seek God and ask what is he showing us. Not how our desires, our own will can be accomplished, but to seek God and ask what is he showing us at this time? What is God showing us? How can we be best equipped to do his will? When did we last, uh, last ask God that? What is he showing us right now? The message of God needs to go out for others to receive it, for others to hear it. Do we pray that we'll be faithful in doing this? Do we pray that we'll be faithful as God is faithful? And so we're reminded today, as Paul reminds the Thessalonians, to pray for God's message, however it goes out, however it's shared. That God's message and God's truth goes out. To remember that God is faithful. That he will always be faithful in spite of our own mistakes, our own flaws. And also to pray for God's direction. For God to lead and direct us on all our paths, every step of our journey. So that we're trusting in him, in his faithfulness. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you that you are faithful. In spite of our own mistakes, our own flaws, you remain faithful and you continue to use us. And we pray for your message as it's shared in all parts of the world with all sorts of challenges. We pray that you would lead and direct and you would make the path straight. I pray that for all of us in our lives and for all our churches throughout the world, that we can trust in your leading and directing. In Jesus' name. Amen.